The religious leaders wanted Jesus to give them permission to punish a woman who had disobeyed God's law. They thought they were doing right to punish this woman. However, Jesus reminded them that they were sinful people too, because we all are sinful. We all need God's forgiveness. If you could be any super villain, who would you be? Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we're here on Non Avengers again. So, if you could be any super villain, who would you be? So, I had to look it up because honestly, I don't know. But um, I was looking at Poison Ivy. So, she was a, a super villain with Batman. Um, and it was really interesting. You look back at her history, um, she was a botanist, so she studied plants. Um, and I think it's pretty cool. Um, if I wasn't a teacher, maybe I'd be a botanist or at least an ecologist, so working with plants. So uh, today we're gonna talk about Spider-Man. Spider-Man is super popular. He's appeared in a handful of Marvel movies, uh, but he goes way, way back in the whole history of the comics. And he is by far the most popular Avenger. Uh, I know my students love him. They're trying to shoot Spider-Man web out of their fingers all the time. He is. The, he's been a top-selling comic since he was first introduced. He's starred in multiple movies and TV series, and he's even had a long-running comic strip in the newspaper. Um, he's saved New York and the world multiple occasions, and he has taken down villains like Vulture, Sandman, the Rhino, the Lizard, Kraven, the Hunter, and of course, Green Goblin. But as heroic Peter Parker can be, he is just as well known for his mistakes as his successes. So shortly after he was bitten by a radioactive spider, which turned him into Spider-Man, he chose not to use those powers to stop a thief. A short time later, that same thief murdered his beloved uncle Ted, or Ben, sorry. Peter could have saved his uncle's life, but that one mistake cost him dearly. It doesn't make Peter any less of a hero that he failed to save his uncle Ben, or even his first girlfriend, Gwen Stacy. It makes Peter human. Peter's mistakes and his humanity are a big part of why comic book lovers adore him, and we like him too. Uh, we can't relate to a perfect superhero who never makes mistakes and always saves the day, but we can relate to a boy who struggles with self-doubt and lives with the guilt of his past mistakes. He's not perfect. It's important that we need to remember that we're not perfect either. Not that we need reminders, but being mindful of our humanity can help us become better non-Avengers. When someone makes a mistake that hurts us, our natural desire is to have justice. We want to make them pay. We want to set things right. But when we stop and remember that, we are just as human as they are, and we can ease our anger and forgive them. One of the most dramatic moments in Jesus' life happened when some men brought a sinful woman to him. The law at the time said the woman should die for her mistakes, and the teachers of the law wanted to see what Jesus would say. Jesus made a powerful statement that all of us as non-Avengers need to live by. So today's lesson is out of John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And it says, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning, and he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground, and as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with a woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go. And from now on, uh, no, from now on, sin no more. So Jesus was the only man who never sinned. He was perfect. He's the only man who could rightly judge this woman. 
But when the men confronted him and demanded that he pronounce sentence upon her, Jesus said nothing at first. When he finally spoke, he said one sentence that disarmed them all. No one in that crowd was without sin. They all knew that they had made mistakes every day. There was nothing for them to do but to lay down their rocks and go home. The beautiful thing is that Jesus did not condemn the woman either. He forgave her. He would have forgiven those angry men for their cruelty too, if they had asked. Jesus came specifically so that he could forgive the sins of the whole world. He wants us to be forgiven as we have been forgiven. Um, and he wants us to forgive others as we have been forgiven. So non-avengers do not hold the mistakes of others against them because they know that they too make mistakes. We forgive as Jesus forgives. It's never easy to forgive other people when they make mistakes. I know, it's really hard sometimes. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, it doesn't matter if the mistakes are big or small. When someone messes up, we wanna see them suffer the consequences. We befriend them, we talk bad behind their backs, we laugh the gossip we hear, we treat them in a way that we would never want to be treated, especially if we were the one who messed up. The harsh reality is sometimes we are the one who messed up. We easily forget how many times we have let other people down and we judge others severely. If we stopped to remember our own mistakes and how we felt when we messed up, we wouldn't be so harsh. We would forgive. We would listen. We would have compassion on those people like Jesus had on the sinful woman. We would remind everyone else who wants to stand and judge that they too have made mistakes. We would become peacemakers who forgive those that need it because Jesus forgave us. Maybe you're in a situation this week. You haven't thrown rocks, but maybe you've thrown insults or gossip. You're still mad because maybe someone wronged you weeks ago and you vowed to never let them forget that mistake. It's time for you to forget it. It's time for you to forgive. And it's hard. It's time to remember that you need forgiveness as much as they do not only for your own mistakes, but for your judgmental heart. Jesus is the only one who could rightly judge anyone. And his message for us is the same as it was in this lesson. Go and leave your life of sin. That sin includes judging others. And if we want to be non-avengers, we need to forgive as he forgives us. Well, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone can be forgiven. Let's show the forgiveness that we've received from Jesus to others. Dear God, help us to be more forgiving to everyone. Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Let's make this week's lesson real. Make it a family goal that everyone is more forgiving this week. Remind each other that none of you are perfect and that you all should forgive as you've been forgiven. 